Hello and welcome back to another episode of Xenonauts 2. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our blind-ish playthrough of Xenonauts 2, a freshly released game. It is time for our next mission, this time an abduction mission where we need to kill all of the aliens in the jungle. So throwback to Rumble in the jungle. It is time to get that sweet, sweet minus 10 panic level global and our team stands ready. So. Let's take Skyhawk. We got uh, wonderful two accelerated machine guns on our heavies. Soon I think we might need two rifles and then that's pretty much it. Pistols could be a good thing, but I don't know if we want to spend money. Much rather spend money on armor because the armor upgrade is very substantial and I would lo love to play with the same soldiers and try to lose as little as possible. It's not always possible because life is very cheap in this game but we might be able to at least prolong our lifespan. Good, we have landed full disclosure, game crashed, I needed to reload uh, the save and effectively need to replay a bit of the strategy layer so same mission as uh, before but this time not in asia but effectively in australia so we are on our first mission uh, that requires an abduction five abduction tubes need to be um, yeah freed the civilians each give three alien alloys and three alarium and we only have a couple of rounds for that. Plus, to make matters worth, worth uh, we are in dark conditions. And that is an asected... Commander? Wait, what? A second gun one? Oh my lord. This practically screams, please use your grenade launcher. Okay. Well, not so good. Jumping in, jumping right into the middle here. Full autoing the head out of this guy before snipe, uh, sniping him down. Unfortunately, Uncle Nuber here took a nice little shot to the face. Don't appreciate that at all. Good. That, on the other hand, can be very much appreciated. Recovering Uncle Nuber, and of course, there is another one. It's just getting better and better. Full auto. Always gets the job done. Straight up hit with a the sniper. Then going back in. Moving up, grenade flies over, second guy down, moving up, and Shattered Realm did a fantastic job there. Now 
what we need to do is heal our good friend. Uncle Nuber already looks a little bit more healthy. I like that. And we have sort of salvaged the situation. Good, we're seeing two tubes, one here and one there. But we are in true XCOM fashion, walking right into the hornet's nest. In order to see a little bit better, we're going to deploy light. Very good, got another enemy. And I think we're pretty much out of options here. Shield is gone. That's a strong rifle. Now I wish we had an extra shield. We don't. Ouch. All right, moving in, we're healing, Anders took a lot of damage. Good. That, on the other hand, was a fantastic uh, action. I like it. One down. Moving up. Anchor down. Yeah. Let's use that. Moves up. Gets that guy. And we're kind of moving further down. Sniper moves into the middle here. And listen, Dilly G. Moves to here. Lights up the area, spots out an enemy. I like it. That's a good chance. Not perfect, but good.
70% is a fabulous shot, but I think we want to suppress him rather. Nope, no suppression there. Shattered Realm has been mesmerized, what? Okay. Well, well, well. What do we have here? We're certainly being attacked from all sides. Okay, that was good. Oh wow, did you you did not really hit him in the back. Un the fucking leaveable. Okay, we're taking away all of the cover. Got to see it from the bright side. Huh. Still not dead. This is becoming ridiculous. Okay. What a tough cookie so far. So we got Uncle Nuber and Felix Koch here. Okay. Um. Good, well, we got two of the tubes down and I think we killed five or six enemies. We can see them very clearly, the enemies that is. So if we play our cards right, we should be able to advance, right? And boy, boy, we have taken a lot of um, grazing shots.
That was not good. I just wanted this here to go away. And this here. Good. So what is the problem here? Ranged modifier? Oh, I see. Yeah. Sure, pistol shot on this range will not hit. hit. The sniper shot, on the other hand, very much does. Good. All of the explosives were used successfully. Good, moving on. These handguns are shite. Can we get something else? The answer is not really. Okay, snipers steadily need to move up. I think we're still fine where we are, but we steadily need to move up. There are not a lot of turns remaining. And we have only gotten two uh, pipes so far. I wish the game would mark them so that you do have an indication where you need to go. That way it is this way it's currently quite random. Three turns remaining. Oh that's not a lot. Unload with a pistol. Triple hit. I like it. That guy takes a lot of beating. Finally. Still got the shield in front, so if someone shoots from here, we are protected. Still not seeing anything here, which is not a good sign, by the way. Okay. Next 
turn we're moving all the way up to here snipers daily moves to here good angles and our second sniper Our second sniper, I mean the chance is very low that they are coming from there. Just making sure that there is nothing. They could also be coming from up here of course. Still no tubes. We got two, but the rest are not here. Not yet. Okay, we got ourselves a straggler on the rooftop. Dilly, however, can manage that. Manhandle him. Bam. Just like that. Changes to the pistol. We got tubes. Sniper moves up. They just want to make sure that we're safe. Good, we're one tube short. This is the one that we needed. Oh, there's even an extra one. Okay, cool. Good. We're almost done. This would be the last one. Two turns remaining. I think we're okay. So we will very likely get the last two, but it's a question of can we get out of here? Will we not take any damage?
Oh, okay, well, I thought it was an alien for a moment, which would be a pretty dick move to wait here for the entire time. Nice. Gotcha. Okay, we got uh, out of there. Smoke bomb, and let's place it here. Just so that if anything comes from up here, we're not immediately being threatened. Couple more lights, left and right, and we're good. Listen, I think Dilly is actually in a good position here. And we should be done. Wow, okay, cool. A bit anticlimactical. I was uh, thinking something more would happen in the last turn. But the first turn was crazy. We came out immediately. Typical UFO enemy unknown. Uh, we came out, took shots couldn't even do much grenades uh, went left and right didn't really help the matter and yeah we we got slumped all right after action report time look at that we got two good old crimson hearts and we got ourselves a golden star four kills and everybody else apparently was already on an abduction mission or there is no reward for it we got a bit of sets here and those who uh, got promoted got a lot of stats but even dilly who doesn't did not receive a promotion still got six stats so over time i think with an average of five stats you can really level up the soldiers so if i now look at our soldiers for instance And I don't know, I, we're just going by accuracy. I mean, look at Dilly just from the stats here. This guy is a monster compared to kind of the rookies. Lieutenant Dilly, 70 hit points, which is a lot for uh, rookies. Almost 65 time units, 80 accuracy, which is fabulous. 1.1 one, uh, point one uh, time times 1.35, so 35% of that is over 100%. If there is nothing blocking it, he will hit every single shot. Great bravery, good reflexes, great strengths for a sniper. Just all around absolute bongus stats. And the others are getting there as well. Which shows how important it is not to F up your soldiers. This game, unfortunately, and that's a bit... Um, that's a bit... Yeah, negative. At least in my book, this game unfortunately doesn't really have a skill tree system or anything else. It is grounded if you like that, it's cool, but it also makes the progression less meaningful. Like you get six stats and you're like, mm, okay, well, fine. But you never really immediately uh, recognize uh, the difference. Good. Larger than sectons, silent corpses are in fact exactly the same species. Uh, autopsy suggests simply 
six wheel dermorphism, robust bone structure on torso, uh, protects him. Well, this guy just has better stats. One uh, suspects of the gender continue to evolve steadily more specialized role. Raw physical and combat ability of Psyon are not dissimilar to that of an average human, however, vast superiority of extraterrestrial technology means deadly opponent on the uh, battlefield. More concerning is that they do have Mesmerize. Psyon are powerful. If a unit attacks a Psyon uh, with a Vision Cone and fails to score at least one hit, Psyon will attempt to Mesmerize them. If the attacker uh, passes Moral Strike, they will suffer moral damage. If they fail the moral test, uh, they are mind controlled for one turn. Hmm. Will not uh, trigger if suppressed, which is how we will need to fight these guys. All right, continuing our barrage. I think we should get our report. Fantastic. Total income. Got ourselves a big, fat, juicy 2 million total income. Expenses are plenty. And I would say thank you, boys and girls, because that was exactly the influx of money that we needed. So what we're going to continue with that, of course, is let's start the obvious ones, we need a new radar, right? Because we want radar 3. Then we want scientists, because that's exactly why we have hired. Very good. With 12 scientists, we are steadily making progress. Uh, I think we can't hire any more engineers. Yeah, we're at capacity. But I don't think that that's a problem. At the moment, we're okay. So, more training center will just mean that more people can train. Currently, that's not a huge uh, issue. Um, what else? Do we feel like there is need for another workshop? Maybe. I mean, the training center is good because it gives continuous XP to everybody in the base, uh, to every soldier in the base. But I don't think that for two soldiers it's now worth 250 grand to just get that. The workshop, on the other hand, could be helpful just to produce more weapons and armor. I tell you what, let's get one workshop. So that we can upgrade that as well. Good, we'll get a set of missile batteries. I don't know when we're going to get attacked. But we're going to steadily build them. And uh, typically base defense absolutely makes sense to have uh, enough missiles. So we're currently producing Warden Armor, which is exactly what we should do. We're continuing the research of laser weaponry, which is exactly what we should do. And then we need to build those bad boys. So maybe it's the right call to actually have to actually have um, the weaponry.
Yeah, and we'll leave 800,000. We don't need to always spend everything. For now, one base is fine. They could uh, use an, a similar concept like an XCOM where you do have an upcoming event monitor. Good. We got laser weaponry, which is fabulous because those weapons hit absolutely home. Heavy lasers. Or we're getting more funding. Listen, we can't even build everything now, so let's go with Xenobiology. As we look into engineering, still got a nice little warden armor there. And if we look at precision laser, that weapon has thermal damage. Super good armor deduction. But only three capacity and weighs 20. And that one here weighs a little bit more, has more capacity, less armor per shot reduction, 40 kinetic. 46 thermal. Dam damage bonus against robotic targets. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing, but those bad boys also cost 50 grand a pop. Laser pistols. How good are these? Oh, I actually deal a lot of damage and do armor hit. You know what? Maybe we're going to get two rifles and two laser pistols. Two laser rifles. Two laser pistols for our shield uh, wielders. And let's continue. Scientists. Hundred sixty percent research speed. So we're substantially upping our game. It was 125 beforehand, now it's 160. Which means heavy laser went down from uh, 8 days to 6.5. Not bad. It's a good speed up. Soon we will have scanning range out of curiosity can we build really cool aircraft weapons hmm that's not bad either that will allow us to get down bigger UFOs. But for now, what I would want is simply focus on armor. We do have enough damage to get most of the stuff done. Warden armor is done. We're now moving on to laser weapons, which is good. Panic is really well under control everywhere. Haven't, haven't lost the mission. And there's Xenobiology. 
Our universe contains almost unimaginable number of different environments to live in, uh, so not surprising to discover opponents that are the bare humans. Uh, similarities continue to deeper scientific analysis. One would expect alien life won't have DNA. Possible that life can only arise in a very narrow cer uh, set of circumstances. However, it seems to be rather more likely that something more sinister is, is at play. Discovering the truth will require way more research. Okay. But we got the stun gun and we got the stun baton. Quantum teleportation. Yeah, or heavy lasers. Uh, how about we're going with the big fat heavy lasers. I like the extra monthly funding. Appreciate that. Okay, so... What does the stun baton do? Weapons. Armor. We got a warden armor already. Stun gun. What exactly does that do? 15 stun. Fused against mechanical. This weapon will instantly inflict EMP damage. This is often an effective way of killing robots. Ooh. Okay. Laser pistols, sorry, you're done. New best friend stun gun available. Stun baton. Weapons designed to render enemies unconscious. Yeah. Not the biggest fan of that, we're not going to charge up to them. Let's just continue. Laser rifles and then stun guns. So what, should, what do we have? I think we can launch our interceptors. Angel 2 is not completely great, but good enough for now. Let's get that UFO down over the Ukraine. Commands an attack. Okay, Angel 2. I see how it is. one might take a lot of damage here lying a nice maneuver behind the UFO Oh, nice. Good job. I like that air combat. It's not great, but it's a nice mini game. Yeah, we're definitely going to launch a ground combat team. We want to up level up our soldiers. We're not here to give salvage rights to anyone. All right, Andrus is uh, still low on hit points. I don't like that. Uncle Nooper is 90% hit points. I think we can get them back in action. And Natalia looks ready as always. 
So let's get her back into action as well. And that will happen the next time. But I want to show you our new tools that we do have. Before we do that though, let's first align everything here on uh, the Skyhawk. One, two are the shields. Five is the Grenadier. We got Assault and uh, Rifleman. Assault really is also a Rifleman to be entirely honest. Good. We got Warden Armor, which will free up carry weight. Vabana. And with that, our front line. Oh, nice. So many great items. But I think what we really need. Is a second shield. How much does that weight? Wait, it's 50. Well, it's okay, it does not have that much room. In which case, we're going to get more explosive charges. We don't have the pistol upgrades yet, so that's fine. Do we have the assault rifles? No, we don't have that either. But you can uh, see that the armor upgrade is fabulous. Warden armor, 20 AC, uh, AC just absolutely stunning. I have to wonder, should we go with that and just switch in the rifle as and when needed? Seems logistically sound to me. I mean, they do have explosive charges, right? And then whenever it, whenever the shield is gone, they do have a reserve weapon. Good. Shattered Realm already had Warden Armor, so he had the slight advantage of uh, using that before anyone else could. I think his equipment is fine. We're going with Warden Armor here as well. And I think the question is really, do we put more armor on these guys or not? I think since they are frontliners, speed matters a lot. Having a flashbang grenade at the right time can also help quite a bit. Or in the case of them, maybe normal grenades, actually. All right, Grenadier. Huge upgrade. Warden Armor frees up so much carry capacity. And that can be put into more grenades, of course. Yeah, fabulous. More grenades. Warden armor for the heavies. They do have those extra shields that we were talking about. Also got some extra uh, explosives there. It's just so much better with Warden armor.
Tony, definitely ready. You know, just for good measure, give him that extra armor because there is no reason not to. And whilst we're at it, just add a little bit more sniper ammunition because we can. And really with this warden armor, our snipers are at 23 armor, which is great if you think about it. Good. In terms of weapons, we unfortunately didn't have the pistol upgrades and also not the laser rifles, which would have even further increased our combat capabilities. But yeah, as you can see, we are now rocking 20 armor, which first of all, that needs to be penetrated. And with non armor penetration, that's 20 damage less for every single shot. Granted, most of the weapons gradually reduce the armor, so you can't stand there forever. There is a little bit of a shredding effect going, but 20 armor, absolute lifesaver. Uh, so with the right level of armor, we can, we can pull our own weight. And if we do have, I mean, Felix here is new, so of course for him, not so much, but if you look at the snipers who really didn't take a lot of hits, look at the extra stats that they have gotten, right? Time units. Dilly, for instance, has 12 extra stats or 10 to 12 extra stats on every single stat just due to um, combat experience and medals awarded. He said 81 accuracy in full armor. Wow. That's pretty damn gnarly. Appreciate it. It just needs a even stronger rifle. And then this here should not be a problem anymore. Good. Anyways, that's the end of today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Showcased a little bit of the new armor that we've gotten. Next up, we're getting more and more new weapons. We got the funding. We got most certainly a lot of enemies to kill and stronger enemies will come. So we can very much uh, need that armor upgrade. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed Xenonauts 2, uh, give it a like and uh, see you in the next episode. Bye bye.